Hello, MCU fans. Today, we're going to try to make some sense out of all the new Deadpool CinemaCon reveals, because boy, oh boy, did Kevin Feige ever come to play. He brought nine minutes of footage from the Deadpool and Wolverine movie and showed it all in its entirety. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't there myself, but I have scanned the web to find people who either were there and gave their firsthand accounts, or others like me who have tried to analyze it and figure out how it all fits in. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to talk about how I think this new information fits into the Deadpool and Wolverine movie itself but also how I think it ties into the overall multiverse saga. It's going to be a lot of fun, so without further ado, let's dive right in and see what we can find out. Don't forget, we have an April contest running all month long. Be a subscriber, leave a comment, win a book or a steel book. Best of luck. Also, we have the membership option in case you want to help me with my goal of doing this full-time one day. You get cool perks like custom emojis, behind-the-scenes videos. I'm even looking at doing early release videos for members only. But... No matter how you support the channel, it's all greatly appreciated. Leaving comments, liking videos, subscribing, those things matter too. So thank you so much. All right, so according to the accounts, they start with footage showing that Wade is a really bad car salesman, right? Remember in the trailer, we saw this. In fact, we saw his badge, if you zoom in, that says sales assault associate with DriveMax. So yeah, it sounds like he is dropping F-bombs left and right in front of customers and having a lot of inappropriate discussions with them. What a shock. So he's not selling many cars. But we also see that he has given up being Deadpool. So this shot from the trailer makes a lot more sense now. This is before he goes to the TVA, and he's basically decided to stop being a superhero. Now, Peter is trying to convince him to pick it back up, you know, put on the suit, and get the team going again, right? But nope, Wade wants to have nothing to do with it. We also supposedly see how he gets that nasty wig stapled to his head because, well, we see him stapling it, so ugh. Can't wait for that, right? <laughs> but then supposedly on his way home, we see a construction worker who is spying on Deadpool, basically, taking photos of him. Now, obviously, this is not a scene from the movie. I just didn't, I didn't have a scene to show for this. In fact, bonus points if you know what movie this is from. <laughs> but the important point is the TVA is supposedly spying on Deadpool, which is interesting. Why would they need to do that, right? That's, that is an interesting fact. All right, so then he arrives home to the surprise birthday party that we saw in the trailer, and we learn that he is living with Blind Al. So this is her apartment, uh, like he went to go visit so many times in the first two movies. That means he is not living with Vanessa. They seem to not be together. Uh, that was kind of confirmed. I mean, the trailer sure hinted at it, but now we get confirmation because he even asks her, you know, is she dating? Finds out she's got a, a boyfriend and asks even, how's, how's it going with your boyfriend? And she says, well... He hasn't gotten me shot yet. So, funny line, but that may kind of give a hint as to why they broke up. Because, remember in the second movie, obviously she was killed, brought back from the dead. But maybe the trauma of that event has made her realize, hmm, being Deadpool's uh, girlfriend might be a little too dangerous. So it might have separated them uh, and, and drawn them apart. All right, so then, almost to follow that up, Deadpool jokes, well, if this were five years ago, you'd all be dead. Only Deadpool could drop a line like that, right? Well, I love the line for a couple reasons. Number one, it establishes that, yes, Deadpool 1 and 2 happened in this continuity. Yay, that's awesome. Number two, it establishes five years now are, are, are the distance of time between Deadpool 2 and Deadpool 3. So some time has gone by. But number three is just this reminder that, yeah, he did save all their lives, right? Because they would all be dead. Vanessa would be dead. Peter would be dead. The whole team would be dead. And then he continued to do all kinds of other crazy things, killing the crappy Deadpool from uh, Wolverine Origins, killing uh, Ryan Reynolds so he can't be part of Green Lantern, etc. So I love the fact that all of these things happened and they tie them all together very nicely. All right, so then it's time for him to make a wish. He blows out the candle, and according to reports, almost immediately there's a knock at the door and the TVA show up. So it certainly seems to imply that like he made a wish and this is his wish come true. So we'll, we'll see if that's really where they go, but that's kind of clever if, if they do that. All right, so he eventually uh, shows up in front of Paradox, as we saw in the trailer, and then these are first-hand quotes that people said uh, are in the trailer where Paradox says, we're really a watchdog organization. We're in charge of defending the sacred timeline. Yes, he said it. He said the thing. He said sacred timeline. So that's why I'm really theorizing this is not the same TVA as we saw in Loki. Because in Loki, they're now letting the sacred timeline blossom and be free. There is no defending the sacred timeline. 
everything is allowed to be there. It's free will. That's why the tree is growing and blossoming. All the branches are no longer pruned. So the fact they're talking about defending the sacred timeline, I'm thinking this is the Fox TVA. You know, because the movie is a celebration of the Fox movies. So I think the Fox universe has a TVA. And of course, we saw the TVA in the main MCU, the 616. So then they go on to say, hey, we've been watching you for some time now. Interesting. In fact, they mention we're well aware of your abuse of your timeline, right? Because he goes back and you know kills that crappy Deadpool, saying just cleaning up the timelines. So I kind of wondered, you know, was the plot going to be they were bringing him in for abusing the timeline? Are they mad at him? No, actually, they're fine with that. In fact, they say we brought you here to tell you that you're special. So I think that ties into this uh, overall, just his understanding of the timelines, because even in the first Deadpool movie, when they're talking about bringing him to the professor, he says, was it McAvoy or Stewart? These timelines are so confusing. So he has this ability to sense the timelines, but even more so, this desire to clean them up. I think that is why they're recruiting him, because they want him to clean up, in my opinion, the Fox timeline. But we'll see how this all, all goes down. All right, so... Paradox then says, you've been chosen for a higher purpose, one that could save the entire sacred timeline. So once again, I, I just don't get why it would be the Loki TVA when they're wanting to save the sacred timeline, but we'll see. I just, I just think this is the Fox TVA. All right, so then naturally, Deadpool says sacred timeline, so I assume I'm going to Marvel? <laughs> like he literally says that. And of course, I, I, why would he not say it, right? Because they're, we're seeing these scenes, like we saw in the trailer, of the MCU. So I think that the TVA is teasing Deadpool with something he's always wanted to do, right? They're inviting him to leave his universe and to join the one he's been asking to join for years. This is what first-hand accounts said was their interpretation of what they were seeing. Because remember, there was this funny skit with uh, Deadpool and Korg where he says, any tips on getting in the MCU there, Korg? So I think they're making a meta joke out of this, but um, yeah, that's how people who watch the footage at least took it, is he's being invited to leave his universe and head to the MCU. And then, as we saw in the trailer, he sees Captain America and salutes to him, which that's pretty cool. Um, but then we also, according to the, t to the folks who saw this, we see Thor mourning over Deadpool's body. So I'm using this scene from Thor The Dark World because this is Thor mourning over Loki, but they said it was done very similar, only it's Deadpool. Deadpool that he's mourning over. And then Paradox says, oh, oh, that happens in the distant future. So very interesting. Are they hinting at the fact that Deadpool's gonna ultimately die, maybe in Secret Wars? Oh man, that'd be crazy. Because he, I mean, he could, the dude practically can't die. So very interesting. But yeah, they, they are hinting at the fact that he may, he may die in, in the MCU. All right, so then more of these little hints at, we're talking about the MCU here, because Paradox says, would you like to join a timeline that needs avenging? And then uh, Deadpool picks up and goes, would this be a marvelous event, right? They're just making all kinds of jokes about that. And then finally, he says, which we saw in the trailer, I smell what you're stepping in, Sensi. So in other words, he, he's like, I get it. I get what you're hinting at. You want, you're, you're inviting me to go to the MCU. Um, and then <laughs> he grabs a microphone from off camera, shoves it in his mouth or shoves it up to his mouth and says, blank you, Fox, I'm going to Disneyland. <laughs> so there's no doubt, no doubt that a key part of the plot is Wade is being told, if you behave, if you help us, if you do some mission, which we still don't know what it is, keep that in mind, we still don't know, but you will get to go to the universe you've always wanted to go to, the MCU. And really, there's nothing left for him here, right? He and Vanessa are no longer a thing. So this all kind of makes sense. Uh, so then he gets ready to suit up, right? We saw that in the trailer. And it turns out that his katanas are made of adamantium. Very interesting reveal, because uh, he talks about uh, how important those are going to be to him. And obviously, if he fights Wolverine, yeah, having adamantium katanas will be very helpful. So they said that you then see the suit up that we saw in the trailer, you know, where he's putting all his uniform on and getting a little inappropriate touch from this dude, uh, getting his guns ready, etc. And supposedly he even jokes to Paradox about, yeah, your guy's a little handsy. Uh, but they said there's also got the same uh, scene where he's doing the reverse uh, splits. And um, that, then I guess it kind of jumps because I don't think these two things are connected. But they said the next thing that you see is him in the car with Wolverine. So that's a pretty big jump. So I actually think now this is a scene from The Void because they wanted to show you Deadpool and Wolverine together. 
And I actually don't think he meets the Wolverine, Hugh Jackman's Wolverine, until he's in the void. And then, of course, in the trailer, we saw him being thrown out of the car and ugh, fixing his broken arms there. But yeah, this then is the last shot from the footage that they give us at uh, CinemaCon. So, wow. Lots of information about the TVA, many drops about the MCU, uh, Sacred Timeline, etc., and then obviously getting to see him and Wolverine together. So, now we're moving to my theories. So, we do see from the trailer that he's finding different Wolverines, right? Because there's this one, which many have theorized is a different actor, uh, not uh, Hugh Jackman. Uh, so I'm guessing Deadpool is saying, hey, before I go to the um, MCU, I want to bring my buddy. I want to bring Wolverine. So he's hunting down Wolverine. I can't help but wonder if that isn't part of the TVA's ultimate plan because I'm wondering if they're pruning these timelines that he goes to after he leaves. That would be kind of wild. Um, but then ultimately, I do believe he lands in the scene from Logan because, man, it looks so much like that vehicle from Logan. Uh, we'll have to see but I really think he lands there, and I think that triggers him. In, in another meta commentary, it triggers him because they've said, Logan died in Logan, and we're not touching that. Remember, uh, Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman said that. So I think it makes um, Deadpool go nuts, and he starts attacking the TVA, and that's what ends up with him in the void. And I really think most of the movie is going to be happening in the void. And we're going to see several uh, of the pruned members from the X-Men universe, and of course, Cassandra Nova, who apparently will be leading the fight uh, against uh, Deadpool, Wolverine, etc. Uh, and of course, this is Cassandra Nova from the comics, and I'm really hoping that she shows up in X-Men 97 as well. So, bottom line, I think it's a different TVA. I think they are teasing uh, De uh, Deadpool with what he wants to do, which is enter the MCU. And I think the way this fits into the multiverse saga is, if you remember, if you look at Loki, Loki has pretty much been the framework of the entire multiverse saga so far. Loki season one uh, leads to then the loom being destroyed in Loki season two, and ultimately to the tree being formed, and of course, the void being what's left over, um, uh, you know, after, a lot, uh, it seems like Eliath maybe is under control of Cassandra, that'd be wild, but the void is what's left over, and everybody then seems to be ending up in the void. So I think the majority of Deadpool and Wolverine will be in the void, and because the, there's only one void for the entire multiverse, I do think that's where we're going to get some of the MCU cameos for anyone who's been pruned. Like, a, I would love to see a version of the Hulk show up there uh, and Wolverine fights him. That'd be awesome, right? I also think the Fantastic Four will ultimately end up in the void. But the real key is, I think it's a different TVA. I think the TVA and Loki is controlling uh, the tree, but the TVA and Deadpool and Wolverine is trying to control the Fox universe. So let me know your thoughts. Uh, I, I mean, I, they're doing a great job of keeping us guessing, which is fantastic. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and that's fine. Um, but it's just fun to guess, right? So tell me your thoughts. How do you think this all fits together? Are you stoked for July to come? Because this movie is going to be so good. Tell me your theories. Love to hear them. Um, and uh, we'll see you on July 26th in the theater, right? Also, don't forget, right? Be a subscriber, leave a comment, win a book or a steel book. And of course, we have that membership option that I mentioned. And I always like to bring up the Discord. So much going on. Uh, we have watches uh, happening on just about everything under the sun. Uh, we have MMRPG, always a fun time. Uh, we have Star Wars retrospectives, uh, where we're looking at several of the different movies across uh, the Star Wars timeline. Uh, we are extending the timeline on the Moon Girl Season 2 art thumbnail. Uh, we all know my thumbnails aren't that great, <laughs> so this is a challenge to come up with a better one, which won't be hard, <laughs> and I will feature it in my next Moon Girl video, so that'll be fun. And lastly, while we do talk mostly about Star Wars, DC, and Marvel, we do have lots of other forums, so whatever you want to talk about, it's all out there. I will leave a pinned comment so that you can join the server if you'd like. 1,300 members across the globe, conversations 24-7. Also, if you don't mind, like this video, subscribe if you haven't already. You can check out more content, and we'll all continue to enjoy the ever-growing, ever-changing Marvel Cinematic Universe.